Alors, euh, bonsoir. Quand j'ai connu euh, Neto aux alentours de 2003, une des premières choses qu'il m'a dit, c'est que son travail portait autour de la nature. Mais ce que je voyais, c'était euh, qu'il me parlait de biologie, d'astronomie, euh, de sciences dures, euh, qui travaillait avec euh, du polyamide, du polystyrène. Et donc c'était une conception de la nature qui me paraissait très technique. Euh, dans le même temps, il me disait que quand on vit à Rio, on ne peut pas y échapper parce qu'on a la montagne derrière et euh, la mer devant. Donc, euh, c'est quelque chose qui est présent en permanence. Mais je trouvais que c'était assez étonnant d'avoir cette conception très technique, très scientifique de la nature et ce rapport aussi immédiat. Euh, Aujourd'hui, le travail a, a beaucoup changé. Euh, Neto n'utilise plus de polystyrène. Il ne travaille plus avec le lycra. Il fait sa propre teinture. Il travaille avec du coton avec des éléments naturels qui sont liés aussi euh, au, à ce qu'on appelle la crise environnementale d'aujourd'hui. C'est des décisions politiques qu'il a prises dans sa façon de travailler. Euh, alors, ce que je propose de faire euh, ce soir, c'est quelque chose de très simple. C'est simplement de faire une visite guidée de la sculpture dans laquelle on est, élément par élément, et d'essayer de voir, en fait, qu'est-ce qui a changé dans sa manière de travailler et quels sont les enjeux qui sont derrière chaque décision euh, des éléments de la sculpture. On va parler en anglais, parce que mon portugais est vraiment trop insuffisant. Euh, et après cette petite visite guidée, euh, je passerai le micro et puis... Vous pourrez discuter avec lui directement. So Neto, I just sent some words to bring the context and announce that we're going to do a small uh, tour of the sculpture. And because I'm very slow and uh, we haven't seen each other for some months now because of the pandemic, I'm always surprised with the new form of the work and I'm very slow and I need time to understand what's going on. So if you agree, uh, I would like you to do this tour uh, for me or with me. And the first thing I would like to start with is maybe this, which is a sort of a trunk of a tree made uh, with plywood. Yeah, hello. <clears throat> everyone, very uh, nice to be here. Uh, very thankful to Samia and Max to invite me here for the exhibition. It's since a long time we are waiting for this moment. We have done two or three exhibitions in, in Berlin before. So it's uh, uh, very pleased to be here. Since long time I don't show here in Paris now. It's kind of, a, it was a surprise for me. I didn't realize that, but my last show was at the Pantheon in 2006, if I'm not wrong. So it's almost uh, 20 years. <laughs> it's, uh, it's interesting. I didn't thought about that before. And what is interesting about uh, making art is that we never know what's, what's happening in our way and where we are going. And the art I do is a bit like music. <clears throat> and I say that because uh, we never happen knows exactly. So we were supposed to have this talk <clears throat> between me and Frank, but there is a new guest that arrived here, and this new guest come by the Great Spirit, who knows. Yeah, so thank you very much to the Great Spirit for all of us to be here right now, because you know we are just little bugs in this planet. Now we are part of the planet. Lija Clark had a a sentence in an artwork named The House is the Body. And one day dancing uh, under a tree after a smoke a pot, when the force came, uh, I saw myself and all of us very like a microbes uh, inside of a tree, like a puma, something like that. 
and and it came as a kind of actualization of this uh, of this of this uh, sentence. It's so important for me. Uh, this sentence from the 70s, now a very important moment in our civilization, uh, and very beginning of the 70s, end of the 60s, and the actualization would be the from the house of uh, the house is the body would be the earth is the body uh, because we are part of the body of the earth. Now, <sighs> when we breathe, we are having earth inside of us and having earth outside of us. We all the time in the earth. Earth is our home, earth is our body. And uh, since long time, we begin to see the earth as outside of us. And when we put uh, earth outside of us, we feel comfortable to take everything out of earth because it looks like that's something out of us, the relation between the figure and the background. But when we say earth is the body and we see earth as the body, and not something out of us. We see it as part of our body. So any time that we take something out of the earth, we take something out of our own body. It's going to become food. It's going to become plywood. It's going to become clay. It's going to be become a fabric, uh, a, a string, whatever. Uh, it comes from the earth, and from the earth it goes, like us. We're going to be eaten by the earth one day in our life. And this is great, you know, because the deaf is something fantastic. The deaf is a, is a brother, is a sister, who is every day together with us, taking care of us, saying, Ernesto, go this way, Ernesto, go that way. So it's, it's taking care of us all the time, beside of us, each one of us all the time. And one day we're going to say, my dear deaf, thank you very much. Open our arms and... And, and give our soul, our spirit, our body, everything to her, because her gave the life to us, and we're going to give back the life to us. This is a cycle. Everything is a cycle, like this going up and this coming down as a torus, you know, making a cycle. And these cycles of life, when we have this conscience more tender, we receive that. So our guest, ta, ta, ta. The, the came back, you know, and that's the guest that I'm talking about, you know. That's the new guest that's between me and Frank. There is this uh, uh, uninvited guest, and I r love the uninvited guests, you know, because uh, we make a lot of parties. We have done a lot of parties in our life. Uh, that's my wife here, Lilia, for the ones who doesn't know. We are married since uh, more than 20 years. We have one older kid named Lito, which is the mix of Lili and Neto. Lili, her nickname, Neto, my nickname. Neto means grandson, okay? Neto is grandson. My, my full name is Ernesto Saboia de Albuquerque Neto. But because my grandfather has the same name, Ernesto Saboia de Albuquerque, they put Neto in the end to like junior, something like that, but for grandfather, not for... My father is Luiz Ernesto Saboia de Albuquerque. So Ernesto Neto is quite a contraction. And m my family and friends close to family and this kind of thing call me Neto. And on the, on the school, uh, when my brother was not near, <laughs> or, or in the art world, people begin to call me Ernesto, so become Ernesto. Some, half of the people call me Ernesto, half of the people call me Neto. I never know exactly where to introduce myself if I say that my name is Neto or Ernesto, or what, what can I do? And also there is this guy in Brazil, this great musician, composer, uh, the guy that is, this guy is an enlightful guy named Gilberto Gil, uh, probably many people know. And I'm, I'm, Gilberto Gil had whisper in my life all the time, and Ernesto Neto, Gilberto Gil, so I thought it was a good, uh, inspiring, so that's why I became like that. But, uh, but Lili, uh, uh, we have done a lot of parties now, and, and we always understand that the importance of the uninvited people. Because the invited people, we all know. Or if you don't know, somebody knows, it's very stable. But the uninvited people, could be the immigrants, for example, nowadays, now that we have this situation here in Europe, is the people who shake the thing, you know, who invent, who, who create, comes with different culture, comes with a different energy. 
So we, we have this fantastic uninvited guy uh, singing for us here. And then comes the dance, you know, because the chant and the dance, they are always together. Yeah. Ah, coming, getting, getting more happy about that. So this situation is the same on the art. We don't know where we are going, you know. So as, as Frank said, this is a bit a surprise for him, a work that is not everything floating in a way that I'm using to work. The tension is not everywhere. And this is, is interesting for me because it was not a surprise for me because I didn't know where I was going. And maybe things are changing since the Pantheon many times on my work. But then you ask me about the plywood, right? So we, we arrived today and we were like that uh, because we were talking uh, about uh, intellectually talking and then we decided to come here to listen a little bit to the piece. So the trunk is kind of the axis of this work. The, all this piece here is a homage, is a honor of all the trees that had been cut in, in this devastating uh, civilization that we are living today. Uh, long, uh, some, some months ago, I had a vision of uh, a trunk in this gallery with the roots going up to the walls and people meditate in the top of it. And this was weird for me, why we are meditating in the top of a trunk. And then later, uh, coming from feeling myself squeezy to see the exhibition, because sometimes I, I to see something, I begin to squeeze myself, look to the exhibition, and sometimes like there is a kind of line that get out of my eye and begin to show a little bit that and I begin to see this, these guys here full of uh, Lorraine, uh, Loriani, no? you say Loriani, but it could be full of any leaves, you know, and they were so dense, you know, so kind of, you know, not stretched like thin, but like, like brute, like fat, that it began to, to show me uh, a kind of density that I was not used to do, to, to deal with. And I, I was trying to, to understand where it comes from. And one of the feelings that I had is that, well, perhaps it's Max Hetzler Gallery is a German gallery. Uh, the Germans, they had this history of the expressionism on these things. It was much more brute than it is today. And this was, it was coming a bit too heavy for me. I didn't understand well. And the trunk was a bit on the side. And then I went to exhibition uh, to see the exhibition for the second time, uh, because it's a very important and amazing Don exhibition named Moken Shurari, uh, created by an incredible artist who had passed away, named Jaiders Bell, and uh, and all with indigenous artists, you know, from this uh, contemporary indigenous art, indigenous Aiki. Art Indigena Contemporanea. I don't know exactly how to translate, but I would say Indigenous Contemporary Art, in my opinion. And this, when I left this exhibition and I went to the Ibirapuera Park in the heart of Sao Paulo, I saw a trunk cut. And then I said, oh, they, they cut the trunk again. And I never had seen this trunk, and I had been there many times. And then I sit down on this trunk. And, and what I heard from the trunk, I sit down and I begin to meditate. And the trunk said to me, Ernesto, bring me to Paris. It's sliced in poly, in, uh, 
What's the name of it? Uh, it's Lysed on plywood to show the people what I'm becoming. Some, uh, some one or two years ago, I discovered that people make, uh, uh, make uh, um, plywood from a big tree in the Amazon named Samauma, a very considered by the indigenous, uh, the most sacred tree of the forest, the queen of the forest. Roots very big that we can stay like in a group together inside of it, you know. And then, uh, uh, since then, I stopped using at all uh, plywood. I was using, people who knows my work knows that I have done sculptures with interconnecting plywood, benches interconnected plywood, and all of it. And I stopped using plywood because it made me feel so much uh, weird to be, uh, uh, to know that, you know, and with this conscience from the earth, this conscience that come very much, uh, because when, when he said about the uh, uh, polyamide, polyesterine, that's all not nature, processed nature by human being, you know, in myself, myself, I consider computer nature. You know, it's everything that's in the computer is about nature. The, all the materials that is inside of a computer or these cameras or this microphone is nature, uh, come from nature. All the mathematics, all the physics, all the chemics, all the knowledge that is inside of this computer or inside of the process of making this computer is nature, is physics, is nature, chemics, is nature, uh, chemistry, no? chemistry is nature, everything is nature. Mathematics is nature, you know, this is, we are nature, we are nature, and we forgot that. But then there is something that I have said many times in my life, and I'm going to say that again. Sometimes we are in a bar, having beers, and magnetic by the cultural magnetism that keep us together in the table discussing very important things for us, you know, whatever. Uh, but we are sticking that. And, and suddenly a voice come to us and say, hey, Ernesto, let's go. Ernesto, no, come on, take it easy. No, no, not now. No, we're going to have to go. And suddenly we stand up and we, we get rid of this magnetism. And we go, we walk, and finally, when we stand up, we become more close to us, more introspective, more connected to the sky and to the ground. And then we go to the toilet and we pee in the toilet. And this moment is a great connection to the cosmic, you know, to the ground, to the life, to nature, because we are nature. We come back with new ideas, refresh, new, with our cultural self becomes more healthy after that, because we are nature. So this separation is very complex. But at the same time, when we begin, we, uh, we're working with uh, polyesterine, uh, polypropylene, polyester, and all of it, we are working with oil, you know, this dark black oil that's under the ground, which is the body of our ancestors, né? the body of other animals, of other human beings, or dinosaurs. I don't know why, uh, scientifically what's going to be exactly, but it's organic matter that becomes uh, oil and generate all this, this energy that generates the society that we are living today. And then I stop working with that. So that's why, because when I begin to meet, uh, when I met the Huni Queen, the Amazon indigenous, the forest and their medicines, I begin to get in a level of conscience, in connection to the earth, you know, because you drink uh, a, a tea, a medicine that's made by a vine and by a leaf. So it's the leaves, the plants that is talking to us. That's why we, uh, we have these plants here. These plants are plants, healing plants. You know, it's not just to make a flavor uh, in our food. It can heal, you know, all the medicine, most of the medicines that we have in the pharmacy came from the plants. We are, we are sons and, and daughters of the plants, you know. Uh, you all know that they are... <sighs> the plants are remaking this air all the time. The, the air in the earth was unbreathable. Uh, we couldn't survive here. There was no life here. 
they brought the life here. And they keep this life here. We, everything we eat, our plants, when we eat a meat, a cow, we eat in plants. And also, in a steak, 15 liters of water. I don't know if you guys know, you know, but a, a beef is equivalent to 15 liters of water. So people go take a quick shower uh, to don't spend too much water because the uh, global warming and everything else. You better stop eating meat, you know, because you're going to uh, save much more water than taking a quick shower. Uh, and but when, uh, uh, when we get in this field, is that medicines, that plants that talk to us. So we are here, and the plywood is here. This is a, a plywood from Europe, you know, with re replanted plants, uh, very protected, but representing all these plants, all this, this, this taking out of the earth. And what is the situation in Brazil? is that uh, in the last five years, we've d we had a coup d'etat in Brazil. You know, we, we have a war here right now, Ukraine war. You know, uh, uh, very difficult for me to talk about that. You know, it's terrible uh, to know that something like that is going on for me, at least, I believe, for m most of you. It's really, uh, war is really a tragedy, you know. But uh, I don't know what had happened in, in Ukraine in, in 2014, uh, people had told me some things, but I know that in Brazil, in 2016, we had a coup d'etat, you know, and this coup d'etat was very much uh, promoted by the United States. There is a judge named Moro who invented a lot of stories. Uh, Brazil almost broke uh, in that moment. And since then, uh, we have the coup d'etat, the, the president of Brazil, Dilma, had put down uh, the, the impeachment. The impeachment is a judge thing, is a lawyer, no? it's law, law. The, the it item of the law that they use to say that she made something wrong and she needed to be kicked out, and this was voted in the Congress, and then they put her out. Two days after, this law fell down. You understand what I mean? They make it something that this is not a problem anymore. Was something financial, the kind of she make a, a kind of a, they say like a, a pedalada. How would it be that something like you know something uh, something that happens every day, you know? But anyway, after her came her vice president, which is a, a kind of a terrible guy uh, from another party, from another group of people. And since then, the the The, the exportation of Brazilian raw wood officially, besides the, the non, un, unofficially, but the officially is normally with fake papers, full of violence, drug dealers. I just read a report like uh, three weeks ago that the drug dealers from, from the north of Brazil who are sending cocaine to the south of Brazil, you know, who lives in the border of, uh, I don't know, of Brazil, they, is, they are working more on protection of the people who cut uh, the wood, you know, and even being inside of the business or as an owner of uh, and, uh, land that they stole from the government, you know, they, they get in land, they go there and they cut the good wood and take the good wood out produce fake papers, then they pick up that land, they crea create a, a dimension to the land, create a paper, put this paper together with crickets in a kind of a box, and this paper becomes looks like old, then they go to the paper bureau, you know, uh, something, uh, something, this kind of stuff, it receive stamps, of, uh, stamps from the government, blah, 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 after that, no, they gotta keep this land, for a while there. Yeah. So they cut everything, they burn, they put cows, and something like five, maybe 10 years later, maybe three, I don't know, they get the stamp and paper that he's the owner of the land, and then they sell to the people who uh, plant soya, you know? So it's, uh, every, uh, uh, it's very organized, you know, how is the, the, this corrupt land and this, all this exportation. But anyway, this exportation from 2017, until last year, had increased 650 percent, 
exportation of raw wood from Amazon. You can imagine when they devastate a, a land like size of France, or maybe size of half of France today and half of France next year, or something like that. Okay, can you imagine the amount of trees that are cut, the amount of animals that are killed, you know, the amount of insects that are killed? Because we need we need the insects, you know. When when the 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 there was this mining pro crime. Uh, in 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 the river, in the sweet river, Rio Doce, uh, Mariana, you know, crisis of Mariana many years ago that killed the Rio Doce. A lot of uh, iron uh, rejection had fall down in the river. The river become the color of you know the iron want to get rust. It becomes the color of, of this rust thing. I was used to make a sculpture with steel, and I love this rust thing. You know, this rust color. And I, I cannot make these sculptures anymore. I just can't do it, you know, because I, f I saw the river with this rust and I don't want to be part of it in a way. But, uh, you know, I begin to just, it's something on your belly, you know, just I feel like throwing out when I see that nowadays, something that I loved before. But anyway, uh, why I was talking about this river, ah, the insects. So what's happened is that uh, this river killed the frogs, and the frogs were used to bite the insects. And then people said, in one year, we're going to have a lot of yellow fever in the cities around. And the yellow fever began to arrive in Rio de Janeiro, in Sao Paulo, in Minas, you know, because of this river. So it's a body, it's an organic body, it's a bean. You know, so in a way, this, uh, this, this, this tree, when I went back in Sao Paulo to sit down this tree and to say to her, oh, look, we are going there, we are uh, representing you, I, I, I had listened to you and I come into Paris to bring this message, uh, I realized from her sisters and brothers that it, it, it's a trunk that becomes two trunks. So it was just one hole here. And then we change it. It was a red dawn. We change for two holes. When we change for two holes, I realized that there was two eyes, you know, and that this eyes, uh, th this eyes is like it, it comes to me like the, the big spirit, you know, as the big spirit is looking to us and connecting us from here to there. And uh, and that's we are arriving here to ask that and to talk to you because uh, this wood is being cut, this gold is being taken from Brazil uh, since uh, since many years. Uh, this gold that is being taken from Brazil is. Bom, there is also the situation of the gold, okay? That is being taken out of Brazil. The thing is that who buy these things? Who buy the soil? Who buy the wood? Who buy the gold? Who buy the meat? Brazil, since 500 years, is an exportation country because somebody is buying that. Slavery was hardcore, violent. We are fruit of this slavery. We are fruit of the invasion to the indigenous. And this all came to Europe, you know? All this sugar came here. So we, uh, as you guys want to stop global warming, we need to stop buying it. We need to stop buying wood. We need to stop buying gold. We need to stop wearing gold. You know, this is crazy, you know. We need to renew who we are and what we want as a society. And, and stop eating meat is a good idea. It's good, very healthy, I would tell you, you know. <laughs> but I'm going to pass a little bit to Frank. We, we, had a, we had a sound here, too. And I thought about uh, now at this moment, not now, but later, that we could we have li little drawings. If you lay down here and here, there is a little hole from a chant that uh, I kind of receive and this kind of thing, uh, and that you can lay down and listen to that. Uh, I thought that maybe we could take out later and we could listen together because we are all together here, but during the exhibition, we're just going to be able to listen if you want to lay down here. 
Okay? Brother, the, the mic is with you. So that was the first element of the sculpture. I hope you're not hungry because we're here for the next eight hours because there are seven other elements in the sculpture. We started from the trunk and from the vision and we could consider this is the ground and the trunk is in the ground. And parallel to the ground, on the top of it, we can see a sort of circle or polygon of 12 sides in wood, in recycled wood, which would function as a sky. And you called it the gem. Yeah, it's not, it's not that I call, you know. It's like what is interesting is that how, because one thing is have the vision, and the other thing is how to transform that in a sculpture, let's say. Uh, and then we had a lot of process when we are doing that. While we are working, drawing, what I, what I use it to say is that if you see, you have an idea, you see an art, you feel a work, and you, um, and when you finish the work, you say, well, that's exactly what I had in my mind. <laughs> That's, that's no art, you know, because nothing happens in the middle of the way. So in the middle of the way, when we begin to touch the work, to work with our fingers, uh, we, we, it, it transforms the process that we go. So our fingers teach us very much, you know. So when I, when I say gem, it's because when I begin to draw that, I begin to see all these sides, and I begin so, to see that as a gem, in a way. And a gem is a ring, you know, in the end of the day. Uh, I mean, a gem is something that we don't get inside, and we are inside of this. So a gem could be a reference to the outline, but also could be a cell, you know, that, that's what I feel that is more like a cell. Uh, and also these, uh, these uh, drops, these vines, these uh, guys coming down and touching the ground, they would be the uh, cytoplasmatic membrane of it, you know? Something that to get in, we need to ritualize the, the situation. And ritualize this situation is like, uh, we are outside. <coughs> and we want to get inside. So I don't know if you know that the proteins bring uh, elements, amino acids, I don't know exactly the name of it, to our cells, if we, we smoke some pot, it just touch us because the cells re receive it. If the cells doesn't receive it, it goes away. And when uh, the way that is a woman who discovered that, I don't remember her name there, uh, he made a, she made a book named Molecules of Emotion. She is the one who, who, who discovered that in the 70s. Uh, but he, of course, because she's a woman, uh, the owner of the, 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 the lab, uh, it became the name of the, uh, the man of the lab and uh, another guy, friend of him from the lab and her name, because it's two names, her name stay out and they receive the awards, you know, but who discovered everything was her. Of course, no, nowadays everybody knows that it's her, she's great and she made this book, Molecules of, of Emotion. And I have done a piece named uh, The Dangerous Logic of Wooing that is related to that. But the fact is that what they call is that there is a keyhole, you know, there is a, the, the keyhole is on the cells and the key would be this protein, uh, or this protein with this amino acid. I don't know what is the name of the guy. But the fact is that the, the, the way that she tried to explain to us the relation between the, the key and the, and, the, and the keyhole, which is the masculine and the feminine, no? uh, is, is a dance, you know? There is no other way they can explain for us, uh, for our... Um, common sense, that's on a dance. So there is a dance to get in. And the dance to get in here, the ritualistic to get in here, is take our shoes and come inside. So I think when we take our shoes and come inside, we create a kind of a, a action, a, a prey, 
uh, shunt into ourselves, to take a decision, to take our shoes, to come inside. So sometimes it's good to have some limits in between the things. My work is very much about the limits. The limits is the relationship, is the one thing touching the other thing. And this is, reminds very much and very important Lija Clark again. Lija Clark, this fantastic artist uh, who had passed many years ago in the 80s, uh, around the 50s, she was painting geometry together with other group of people, the concrete movement in Brazil, uh, influenced by Max Biel, uh, a Swiss artist. And she had a flat uh, frame, then flat canvas, but a very flat, like this, this large frame around the canvas. And she began to paint uh, her geometry into the commas and crossing from the commas to the frame, from the frame to the commas, from the commas to the frame, from the frame to the canvas. And on this crossing, she was talking about the relation between culture and nature, individual and institution, but the fact is that the line in between the canvas and the, and the frame, she called organic line. And this is very much reminding another guy that is very important for me, and you all know, Brancusi, who had the kiss. And in the kiss of Brancusi, you have this line in between the eyes, in the lips, and, and that, especially in the eyes and the lips. And this line, for me, is also the organic line. Like this line in between us is the organic line. You know, so the organic line is always in between. It's like this outline between the figure and the background, and then internal figure and the background, perhaps the nucleus of the of the of the cell. You know, so this is a a, a point uh, where I uh, where I I don't know if I answer you. Did I? Yeah, because the, the, the idea of a gem is more idea of the edge, you know, the edge between one side, inside and outside. But we could, we could take it another way. We have 12 drops made of cotton and filled with stones. We are bringing attention to lift up, let's say, the roof of the, of the sculpture. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we have another tension, the other way around, which connects the two holes to the core of the trunk. We always have a tension. All relationship is a tension. The, the, uh, the, uh, the African people, or at least the Afro-Brazilian people, they like to say that there is a crossroad that they call encruzilhada. And life is encruzilhada, constantly encruzilhada. That we are always, como é que seria disputa? Dispute. There is always a dispute in life. For example, the talk between me and Frank right now, there is a dispute. The relationship that we have is a dispute. Every relationship, even, even me and my wife. You know, I love her, she loves me, but there is a dispute constantly. You know, all the time. So, and can you imagine between uh, Ukraine, Russia, OTAN, and all of these guys, you know, there is the dispute. But you cannot destroy the other. Because if you destroy the other, you destroy the dance, the good part of the dispute. Because the dispute is a dance. A dance is a dispute also, you know. So what, what, what are these guys? And they are, they are very important, these guys. The African people, as the indigenous, are very important because they had, they had developed different uh, knowledges. While people were in the universities studying all this structure to develop all this technique, this incredible uh, power to, for example, now we are being recorded in the microphone here. Some people can watch and listen to what we are talking about from far away, you know. Uh, it's, it's incredible that we all had been the COVID compressed at home and communicating through the through uh, this canvas, and this is so interesting because what I see in the art world nowadays, at least in Brazil, a lot of people doing paintings, a lot of people interest in paintings, and you know how I felt about. It. I think because we stay two years so much in a flat world, far to the real world far to the real encounter, to the real touch each other, to the hug to each other, we begin to be uh, uh, mediated by the canvas. But, and then Instagram, 
all these things now we talk about Instagram. Uh, Instagram became, became a kind of a taba, a place of encounter, because this is a place of encounter where we can all together come here. Many times I had visions of me playing uh, with uh, sticks and hole and these bubble, these little balls that people use to play. And I wanted to have holes here and have these sticks here. And this was uh, weird. I have these visions, but I couldn't make, you know, because sometimes you have a vision, but you don't go. Because, because it's also into the vision there is a dispute at the same time, you know. And then, two days, it, I, when I come here and I begin to see that, I was like very much, what is the holes? How, uh, what is the thing? And suddenly, somebody said to me, I mean somebody, I mean somebody, a great spirit, said to me, Ernesto, you have hands. <laughs> At the same time that I have these visions uh, in Brazil of the thing uh, written here, I have a vision of we pick up a piece of cloth and take care of it. Like kissing it, taking care of this baby, you know, passing the hand as we pass the hand in a baby, in somebody that we love, somebody that we care, you know. And then now I realize that this is the relation. So because, so perhaps I might be wrong, you know, and, and I don't care about that if I'm wrong or right. But the fact, the feeling that I had is that... Uh, because of the canvas, we have a lot of photography, the world of photography. We take pictures all the time, you know, we share pictures all the time, and nobody can stand so much pictures. But the painting is a picture with more flesh, you know, not so realistically. And because we become so much out, out of the contact, the body contact, we become to be so much in the screen, the painting uh, become to be the, the queen, again, eh, because it's up and down, uh, of the art scene in the world, because it's a lot of paintings everywhere. And this is so crazy that I did some paintings, you know? And these paintings that is over there is representing uh, this situation, this devastation situation that's going on in Brazil, these graphics of profits. For example, the biggest, big painting there is a painting representing these five years of the big exportation and they are 650% grow of the exportation of raw wood. That represents the devastation of Amazon in, in the end of the day. But not, not that's the way the guys say. The guy talk about that very happy. Oh, we exported this year, the last year, 228,000 uh, uh, millions. No, 2.36 uh, million tons of wood, what is equivalent at 228 millions of dollars. Super happy, you know. And this is kind of, but, but you know, in Brazil, there is a misery, you know. Who is receiving this money? You know, people are very, in a very difficult situation there. Really tragic. And I think in many places of the world that's being sucked. You know, what's going on in Congo at the moment? But Congo is serving Bauchita to the whole world since many years. You know, it's not just in Brazil. And that, that's why we have this Gondwana time when uh, South America and Africa was connected to each other. So that's where is being sucked very much the, the energy of the earth, you know. And it generates this situation. Uh, bon, you, you know, as I do, that uh, a lot of violence comes from that. But uh, anyway, uh, but then I did these paintings, you know, so it's kind of weird for me. And this is not something that uh, uh, I'm not sure if I want or not, you know. It's something that uh, I felt like. And what I felt when I saw this thing that we are enchanted by these graphics. Uh, this abstraction is that this is, looks like the new cave of our time. You know, like here in the cave, we paint bisons, we paint, put the hands, all these things, this uh, uh, relationship that we have with the environment, with the hunt, and with the consume, and with the eating and surviving, and all of it. Now is these abstractions on the wall. And this is something, uh, when I did a, uh, we did a little one, uh, a little graphic, of the wood and the and the and the profits, and you know when I saw it, 
because I begin to do, and then one of our assistants, Anna, she began to keep doing, going on. And then I came back and I saw it. I said, I don't love this, you know? So we are having this kind of uh, uh, tense tension now that Frank is trying to say, the tension between here and there. This, 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 this gemma frame, for example, it is stretches it out, it floats, but also there is a tension to, that keep it inside. So this tension, this disputa that we live is the place to be. The disputa is the place. It's, it's beyond right and wrong. You know, there's nothing is totally right and nothing is totally wrong. Everything is in disputa at, in, at the same time. And the dispute uh, uh, release the tension. So we have this, these drops full of stones with this uh, string. But here, this is very different because it's not, um, it's not stretched by a tension. It's, it's hung from the wood, but it's touching the ground in a very specific way, in a hole, like a, a touch. Yeah, it's very relaxed, you know. We need tension, but we need to relax him. So in reality, there is a tension inside of it, but also there is a relaxing on this touch, you know. And this relaxing, the way it touch, it, why we create some pores, mouths, a uh, place to receive this touch, like when the water falls, uh, on, the, uh, on that drop falls in the water, it creates a wave, yeah? a ring wave. So this is a little bit like that, representing this connection, like the rain falling down on the ground, and the ground <sighs> absorbing the rain, you know? For example, in Amazon, uh, what's happened is that uh, uh, the water, a lot of water comes, you know, it's very important also, the elements that come from Africa, from the desert, to the rain in Amazon. Did you know that? It, this is super, uh, it's part of the big rain in Amazon. But the, 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 the vapor, I don't know, the water comes from the sea, mixed with these uh, particles that comes from the desert, create the, the, the clouds that goes to Amazon. But the clouds, they need a kind of friction one again, the dispute, the tension. They need friction of the air to become rain. And the air is so flat, but the trees, they exhale, exhalate a kind of perfume. And this perfume, let's say, shakes the air, you know, and then create the friction, create the, the uh, granul, 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 granularity, something like that. <laughs> and with this thing, the water comes in Amazon, in the forest. <laughs> because the trees, now just to remind again, the trees <gasps> breathe that, wants to take it down. Then it calls a lot of water in the Amazon. Half of the water go to under the ground. There's a lot of water under the ground. That's why, you know, we, we all know that. Now you make this hole, I don't know the name of it, and the water is down there. Now, the earth is water. And, uh, and the other half is, is uh, catched by the, by the trees. But the trees at night multiplicate this water to 10 times. And then this vapor goes back to the atmosphere and goes to the Andes, the big Cordillera Andes. And then it bumps on the Andes and it can't go away to the Pacific. So it begins to go down to, to the south of South America, to Rio de Janeiro, to São Paulo, to Minas Gerais, to Paraná, and then the rain falls on this area. If you look in the map, in the area of Africa, or maybe uh, Australia, that's in the same level, is desert. In Brazil and South America, it's not desert, because that's this rain that comes from Amazon. So, uh, and then there is everybody in Sao Paulo, and the South, and maybe in Rio de Janeiro too, and they are cutting the Amazon, you know, so they're cutting the, the water that we drink. But anyway, so this touch that is touching here with delicateness, with tenderness, is the touch that we would like to invite you to touch. To touch your family, to touch Amazon, 
to touch the forest, to touch the nature. Because when we step on the nature, we step very strongly. And sometimes we create marks that uh, takes time to... Cicatrization? Cicatrizar? Cicatrizar. Beaucoup de temps pour cicatrizar. E, e, so there is a, a song that says... Como é que é aquela música? Pisar nesse chão devagarinho... Eu vim de lá, eu vim de lá, pequenininho, mas eu vim de lá, pequenininho. Alguém me avisou pra pisar nesse chão devagarinho, alguém me avisou pra pisar nesse chão de gava, devagarinho. Ivone Lara, né? Dona Ivone Lara? It's a samba, é, from, I think it's from Dona Ivone Lara, or maybe not, but it's say. I come from there, I come from there, very slowly. I come from there, I come from there, very slowly. Someone told me to step on this ground. Very slowly. É pequenininho, né? Soft, mas era, eu vim de lá, eu vim de lá. Pequen... No, sorry, I, I made a mistake. I, I came from there, I came from there, very small. I came from there, I came from there, very small. Somebody asked me to touch this, uh, to touch the ground very slow. Yeah? So this is something uh, that's trying to touch this ground very slow, you know? Here we have little stones too. And you see what is nice, because now you see that it leaves, leaves for us, you know, so we can have some leaves coming down, and you can, uh, uh, Samia and Rachel and everyone, maybe you can leave some stones here, don't need to clean, you know, let, stones, no, the leaves, let, let the leaves here and it's good. So, it's, the, the, I don't know very much about this work, this work is teaching me, you know, like here, you know, like here, a conversation. Huh? There is uh, one thing we haven't talked about yet. It's at the core of the trunk, we have uh, soya that you can find also on the walls, but being transformed into co-food. Yeah, because this soya, soya is great. No? I love soya. Today I had a tofu, I love tofu, you know. But soya became like the, the, the criminal, <laughs> you know, the soy is devastating in Brazil, you know, it was the sugar cane long time ago, now it's the soya, you know, and it's, it's, it's terrible what's going on, and a lot of the soya is done, uh, happens to make kind of uh, uh, cow food, you know, uh, cow food and many other things, you know, the soya to make the crack, everything that makes crack, has soya on it, okay? So when you say, crack, you say, e, soya is there. <laughs> Sorry to say about that, you know. <laughs> but uh, what we did here on these drawings, what came to me is like a caldeira. A, a caldeira, como é que é caldeira? Yeah, something that you, you warm to create this, the, the, the transforming, to make, the, the, make a liquor, for example, you know? So this caldeira making this food, uh, the processing, industrial processing making that, that industrial problematic. And this is something that you can see, for example, the tabac, tabaco. Tabaco is something, is, is one of the most important, if not the most important plant for the, uh, if you pick up, because when you say indigenous people, it uh, looks like everyone is the same, but it is, it's, in Brazil there is like 300 different uh, people, indigenous people, you know, it's like uh, with different language, you know, different culture. Uh, maybe nowadays, uh, I don't know, 250 or 108 languages being spoken, you know, some of them lose their languages because of the invasion, the colonialism, and all of this story that you guys know, and that we still live in Brazil, because we live a self-colonialism supported by, by the people who is buying all of it. Né? The gold, for example, we discovered like some weeks ago 
there was a report that a federal police in Brazil found out that 9% of the gold of an area, big, a gigantic area in Paraná, in Pará, Amazon forest, is going to illegal. I mean, it's illegal mining, but it's le with legal papers, okay? Corrupt papers. It's going to Italy, to a company, 90%. 90% is going to Italy, uh, to a company who make jewelry, and this company is responsible for the wedding rings of 70% of the Italian population. So you go there, my love, let's get married, share the ring to each other, go to the honeymoon, and don't know that is uh, you wearing a, a wed wedding ring that is polluting, uh, uh, killing a lot of fish, killing a lot of natives from Brazil, generating violence everywhere. You know, so this is a, a little bit the situation that we are. But anyway, talking about the tobacco, tobacco is something uh, uh, perhaps considered the most sacred, most important plant for the, if we generalize the indigenous in South America, even North America too, you know. And tobacco generated the cigarettes, yeah? cigarettes which is poison, make cancer, everybody's, get, you get added, everybody is making campaigns against cigarettes, you're forbidden to smoke cigarettes in many places nowadays. Coca, the coca, the leaf coca, is sacred for them, for many different uh, people, uh, native people, Amerindians uh, from uh, South America, uh, and it generates the cocaine. You know, that is a drug, you know, and it's, it, it, cocaine kills a lot of people. Uh, at least I, I have friends who really had been passed away because of cocaine, you know, and then you have crack nowadays. So the relationship with nature is important. What we are doing, what we are doing that we transform tobacco, which is something super med medical, who save people, who, who the shamans use to, to to heal in something that becomes poison. Why coca, something that was uh, also used to heal, becomes poison? Why the soya, that is something so important for the Eastern culture, now we know soya came from the East, becomes the, the, the protagonist of the devastation in Brazil. So we are in this situation. It, it, uh, it's, uh, it, it, I mean, I'm not the first one to say that, you know, there is a shift on the land, on the earth, uh, energy, a feminine energy that's coming, you know, and this is great, you know, it's a great, fantastic energy that's coming, that is generating uh, organic life, generating uh, this shamanism that is spreading out, generating all these discussions that we are having today, generating this incredible new feminine that is coming as a force uh, in our societies, you know, and is also letting a lot of people crazy, like the president of Brazil and his gang, you know, and all these other guys that I don't want to quotate number, names because it's not my people, you know, but the president of Brazil for sure is one of these killers, you know, who destroy everything, who want to devastate everything. Now they are, they are putting a plan to mine, mine in indigenous land without the authorization of the indigenous. Say, I can get in your land, I can mine in your land, I give you some profits for you, and it's fine. You know, besides many other laws that are coming because there is an election in October and they want to pass all of it, you know. So it's really... Um, and Greta Thunberg, you know, she's telling all of, you, all of you that. I'm not telling anything new. I just bring here my pray, my dance, my chant, my song, that I receive this uh, responsibility to be here doing that, as I felt like that at least as an artist, uh, to, to, to spread love for you, my darling. This, this body that is, is in a way, uh, this trunk, the trunk that is there, is a kind of dead body, you know? So there is a kind of, como é que é luto mesmo? Grief, a kind of grief, you know? I don't know why this, these paintings come all in black, you know, but I think it's part of this grief. I think we are living a grief. And in the in the in the cards, in the cards, the cards, no, what are the cards? Cards. Qual é que é a carta, Lilian? Carta, cartinha, aquela que a gente tira e vê a figura do 
da morte do pendurado. Ah, the tarot cards. We have the card of the death, né? which is scary sometimes. But the card, the, the card of the death is also the card of the renovation. So I think this is a time for renovation. And we are here to dance this renovation. So I... You want to say something? No, maybe we can open to the public if they want to. Maybe we want to open to the public. <laughs> agree? Oh, I totally agree. I always agree with you. <laughs> French is okay. I just don't understand very much, but he, he, somebody can translate for me. I'm very sad that I don't speak French very well. I would love to, you know. Je, I, uh, because it's très joli, mas uh, perhaps uh, one day, but I also I would love to speak Hachakun, it is the language from the Huni Kuin. I'd love to speak Japanese, you know, and on this love, 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 I keep speaking English and so boring because it's very much the imperialism in our country and in the whole world in certain way, you know. But there is the jazz, né? there is the rock and roll, there is great stuff too. Donc voilà, je, moi je donnais mon, juste mon impression que j'avais d'être ici. On y est bien, on y est bien. Je trouve qu'il y a une. Uh, there, there is, there is a, a relation, there is a spirit. There, when we are inside here, you. It's peaceful, and in the same time, the, it's. This peace, peaceful is terrible. So there is this ambiguity, but. What is... I'm fine here. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, there is good spirit. I'm quite happy that you are fine here. And you, you, this tension that you're talking about is the, the most important one. This peaceful here, you know, and this is a place to come. This is a place to people come uh, every week, if they want, stay here for a while, lay down, take a nap, you know. But at the same time, there is this uh, terrible message. But that's the situation, you know. We need to join. We need to join the terrible to the to the to the hopeful, to the uh, to the delicious, let's say, and try to move like that way. If we stay stick it on the uh, on the on the crisis of the conflict, we don't move. We need to swallow the conflict to go on, but to go on without guilt, but responsibility. Guilt is something that stops us and don't make us think. Responsibility is something that makes we think. Take responsibility, you know. Change things in our daily life, in our way of living, to move ahead, you know. And that's something I like very much what you said. Because what I want to give to you, besides all this story, is a wonderful place for you to be, at least for one month, while uh, uh, the, the exhibition is here. I, if you want. Ah, uh, it's because for them who, who are recording, is good. Ah, d'accord. I read your little text that you wrote here, and you, tell, you talk about um, this um, statement you wrote at high school, this letter that you wrote uh, um, from the sea to humanity, you being the sea talking to humanity, right? Not me being the sea, the sea, the sea being the a sea. A message from the sea to humanity, <laughs> yeah. right? It is, uh, yeah, thanks for asking that because I forgot about that. But uh, I, when I was a teenager, uh, when I was uh, getting inside, I moved from one school, I was in a kind of more or less school, then I went to a strong school, and then I repeated the year, and you know one of the things that I repeat, this is school, uh, it has, I was with low grade in mathematics, Portuguese, English, and French. <laughs> I never had studied French in my life, and in this school, they teach French. In the, uh, before the last, last uh, uh, by master, by, by month, yeah, the word, uh, before the text, the test, I would need to take 11, the greatest, maximum grade is 10, and I need to take 11 to pass the year direct. So the teacher comes to the whole class and talks to the class like that. <laughs> hey class, so our uh, dear Ernesto uh, need to take 11 to pass uh, to the next year. Would you, would, would you mind if I give two, two 
points for him and then he just need to take nine. <laughs> Everybody said yes, of course I didn't take nine, probably I took four or five, I don't know, maybe three. But I repeat the year, not just because of the French, obviously. But I didn't want to repeat the year. And then there was a school, considered a bad school, uh, very nearby, that they do a kind of re uh, reevaluation. So I stayed dur during the summer one month studying on this school. Uh, and then uh, w the professor of this school, he explained to us, the class, what is the word ultimatum. And then he asked all of us to write a text uh, with this team. And I write a text that was a, a letter from the sea to the earth, to the earth, to the humanity, telling that if we, as humanity, keep, uh, keep polluting the sea, the sea would uh, swallow us, go up and swallow us. And some years ago, I began to remember that. This is the only text that I remember from my whole school. And when I went to the first day of the, the class, there was a lot of students that uh, they, were not, they haven't done this one month, uh, one month uh, uh, class that I did to pass. They didn't do anything, but they passed here, you know. Uh, because, you know, we came pagou passou. If you pay, you pass. Something like that, you know. So, uh, but, but at the same time, it looks like ugly, something like that. But it was incredible because we have a lot of vagabonds from many different schools of Rio de Janeiro that suddenly they all came, but vagabonds that want, that want to go, try to go, you know, that suddenly they, was in the, they were in the same classroom, you know. So culturally, where people from different places, you know, different backgrounds, very interesting. And uh, one day I met a guy who is a psychanalyst who I didn't know much because I play a go go. Pim po, pim pim po, pim po, pim pim po. In a battery, kind of a little school of samba battery, you know, uh, teachers, good teachers. Lily plays, boom, boom. She plays surdo, and then there some people play cash, tak shaka, tak shaka, tak shaka, and uh, they play, tak 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 tak, no, tak 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 tamborim, and some people play chik 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 and uh, but I met this colleague of mine who play a go go with me too, and her husband is this psychoanalyst, and then by nothing I begin to tell him this story about the 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 text ultimatum, and then I told him after that I said to him this story I have been telling some people. And, but together with that, I told about the play, a play we did in the end of the year. That was a guy who he was, uh, he was sleeping and timing the music from Pink Floyd he was running, some girls were dancing, he was uh, dreaming, and suddenly, blam, 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 uh, the alarm clock from the music and symbolizing his alarm clock belt, he wake up and he began took a shower and all of it, went to the school. When he was going to the school, a guy was running and let a pack uh, fall near him. And in the back of the guy running to, take, to catch the guy, there was the police, you know? And then he picked up, after they passed, he picked up the pack and he went the, to, the, to the school. On the way to the school, he met me uh, as a colleague, you know? And, uh, 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 and I said to him, oh, great, let's see what's there in there. On the, on the time off, you know, the intermediate, I don't know how we call it, uh, break. And then in, in, the, in, the, in the reality, I was in the play, I was the one who knows about smoking a pot, and he was the one who never had smoked a pot. But in reality, he was the one who smoked pot, and I was the one who had never smoked a pot, you know? <laughs> so I asked him how should I behave and things like that. And then we went to the, to the toilet, we smoked the pot, we begin to get uh, stoned, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then the women dance again, which I don't like to say very much because the whole of the women was to be dancing, you know? <laughs> but anyway, in, the, in this play. But uh, that's what happened in that moment. And suddenly a professor of geography came and catch us. And then he goes to the public and with his hands holding me here, me here, in fact, and, and the other guy on the other side, he stopped to the, to the audience, like asking, what do I do now? 
And that's the end of the play. And then when I finished to say that to the psychanalyst, <laughs> who he didn't say a word, I looked to him and I said, he's tall guy, you know. I said, you know, man, this was the best school of my life. This was the school of my life. I'm sure I never would be the person that I am if I would not, not had happened that I studied in this school. And this is quite interesting because what is a good school and what is a bad school? This school is school that people want to take out of their curriculum, you know? And that I did that. I, mean, I didn't take out, but I didn't talk. But nowadays, I realize that this was one of the best schools of my life. Uh, or at least the best moment, and I, obviously, the year after, I went to another school. I didn't stay in this school. It was just for this year to pass an year, you know. And what I think, uh, for example, is that maybe we got to rethink about our schools. And I think in Brazil, if you rethink the schools in Brazil, could be a good uh, idea. Not just for Brazil, because we could add the knowledge of the Africans and we could add the knowledge of the indigenous, you know. And this is very important because this thing. Uh, works in our vibration, works in our heart, in our blood, in our cells and heal us. When there is a crisis, first we need to calm down. And the drum, can slow us down. And after that, we can discuss. Sometimes we want the same thing. You are fighting your, with your wife, but you want the same thing. But because of the boom boom pachikum boom progrundum is too high, is too out of tune, we cannot uh, find uh, a fine tune for us, a modulation of our spirit, for us to be able to intellectually go in a good direction. Sometimes it's not a question like Descartes, I think, then I exist. What is right, what is wrong, uh, and judge. Sometimes it's a question of slow down the temperature, you know, modulate the, the soul. So the question is a balance. What you said and what we're talking about is about balance. What Frank is trying to say when he finds about the weight and the counterweight is about balance. And that's what, that's what we need in our life, in our spirit, and in our society to stabilize the crisis, you know, balance. Thank you. I listen to you. I, I, you look like a tree, a living tree, talking to, to trees, to dead trees. Do you feel like a tree? Well, I had felt like a tree many times, and I like to try to feel. I like to hug trees very much. I like to kiss trees. You know, I do that often, not daily, but often. And I think the trees, they have much more wisdom than us. You know, they are here since a longer time. That's the point, the problem of the culture. After we, we, we become, you know, uh, Earth was the center of the universe, you know, the sun was spinning around, then Galileo, Giordano Bruno came and, you know, uh, this story fell down and there was a crisis. We were not the sun, we are the sons of God, we are not the center of the universe. And then we put culture in the place of it, we replace with culture, ah, but we are culture, so we are the top of the top, but you know, the top of the top is here, baby. <laughs> These are the guys, you know, here are. Uh, Mm, mm, mm. Ah. Mm. They are at the top, you know, we are just learning. <laughs> we hide that, but there is this box, you know, and this box has the power to send my voice to the microphone. Well, I don't know why we keep hiding that, you know, like something ugly, but it's here. <laughs> so, guys, uh, I invite you to to come here, everybody, you know, if you want to take a shoes. I mean, you don't need to do it just if you want, of course. And we, c we could play together, you know. <laughs> <laughs>